Welcome to my YouTube channel, subscribers, and if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe right now. I am David Banda, the Investor Data Boy, or you might as well call me the A Plus Ambassador. So today we'll be going over an interesting question. It says, an infinitely long line of charge has a linear charge density of 8.00 times 10 to the power negative 12 coulombs per meter. A proton at a distance 9.0 centimeters from the line and is moving directly toward the line with speed to 1,200 meters per second how close does this proton get to the line of charge so now um in this question we can we can start with our data and see what we have so i can write data and see what we have here we have got our charge density lambda which is equal to 8 times 10 to the power negative 12 coulombs Per meter then our proton is at a distance so our r r is equal to 9.0 centimeters so this is our r so this is the initial r then the final r is the one that we want to find then we also have um, the speed which is our velocity which is equal to 1200 meters per second so there are a few formulas that we have to understand when we're doing this. Um, I'll not derive them here because the derivation is very, very long. But basically we have to we have to understand that the potential energy when we're, do it, when we're dealing with uh, charges is the charge times the voltage. That's the potential energy. Then the other the other equation that we have to know is the equation is the well just the the equation of uh, conservation of energy which is ki plus pi which is kinetic energy plus potential energy is equal to kinetic energy final plus potential energy final which means energy when we're starting um our equations will be the same as energy when we're ending our equations no energy is lost no energy is gained then the other equation that you have to know is that um is the equation for the voltage difference which is the change in voltage the voltage initial is equal to minus sorry minus the voltage final is equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon natural log of r final over r initial so once you just know these equations it will be easy for you to solve the equations that might give you difficulty are this one and uh, this one but basically the, the conservation of energy i think at this point we all know so we can dive right in into our equation and start finding whatever we can find so that we end into finding the final so what we want is this guy here this guy here is all we want but then we're going to exhaust all these equations so that we can find this guy so now um i think i can erase this i can erase this hope you've written it down that uh Yes. So now we are going to we are going to start. We are going to start. Um. By the way, this is this pi is a constant, and then this epsilon as well is a constant. A constant which is eight point eight five times ten to the power negative twelve. So we are going to start first with um with the um, with the energy with the conservation of energy equation, which is K E initial plus P e initial is equal to K e final final plus P e final. Then we're going to have um, the kinetic energy is given by one over two m v squared. That's initial plus the the potential energy is given by Q v initial, which is going to be equal to one over 2 m v final squared plus q v final now remember the final velocity the final velocity will be zero because we're trying to find out how close it gets so when it gets to the closest point it's going to stop moving so this entirely will be equal to zero then we can move this this side so that we can have uh, like terms so we're going to have 1 over 2 m v i squared so now the mass is the mass of a proton 
and the charge is the charge of the proton which we all know if you don't be given in your test you can ask your lecturer he can definitely give you if he doesn't give you then it means you just have to memorize i'm going to give it to you shortly so we can move this to the other side so it's going to be q v final minus q v initial so here we have the mass we have got the velocity because we've been given um we don't have the final velocity and the initial velocity but then we can see that this actually looks similar to this this that we have here so you can try to make this the subject of the formula how are we going to do that we're going to do that by um collecting the like terms here we're going to factorize so we're going to have one over two m v i squared equal to um q v final minus v initial now remember this is v initial minus v final so what do we do to make it v final minus v initial we can put a negative sign on the outside then this one will be negative and this one will be positive so you can label this one as the final one and then this one as the this one as the initial then we are going to divide both sides by negative q over negative q then we're going to have one over two m v i squared over q negative is going to be equal to v i minus v f which is going to give us this equation so i think at this point i can rub i can rub this that's here I can we can rub this we can rub all of this so depending with how your lecturer wants you to be doing things questions like this you can do a free body diagram you can be labeling your equations for example at this point you can label at uh, at this point you can label this one maybe as your equation two then the other one where we had uh, we had v i minus v final being equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon natural log of rf rf over ri so we can label this one as equation one and then we can put a subheading to say equation one and two um then now we can start now with equation with equation one here where we can say vi minus v final is going to be equal to This one is going to be equal to this that we have here. Um, 2 pi epsilon. Natural log of RF over RI. Then now, here, we have this one. We have we have everything here, but we don't have these two. So this equation can only be stuck here. But then when we're going to compare this equation, equation 1 and equation 2, we're going to find that in equation 2, we have everything that we need. So I can rub, we had R1 over 2 mv squared i being equal to v i minus v v i minus v final over q negative then we had found that we had uh, used this we had found this equation when we are just starting to so say this is equal to lambda over 2 pi epsilon natural log of rf over natural log of i so we are going to use this equation, the first equation. So it's going to be V i minus V final, V initial minus V final, negative one over two. The mass, the mass of the the mass of a proton is one point one point six seven times ten to the power negative twenty seven kilograms. The velocity is one thousand two hundred squared all of this will be divided by the charge of a proton is 1.6 times 10 to the power negative to the power negative 19 coulombs so when we punch this in our calculator 1 divided by 2 0 0.5 multiplied by 1.67 exponent negative 27 all of this multiplied by 1200 to the power 2 then we divide it by 1.6 exponent negative 19 it's going to give us it's going to give us 7.515 times 10 to the power negative 3 
so now we've got our voltage difference so i can i can rub so as i was saying we found our v initial minus v final to be equal to negative 7.515 times 10 to the power negative 3. so then this is what we're going to use to equate um since we know v this one is simply equal to lambda 2 pi epsilon natural log of r final over r initial so we're going to equate negative zero point negative seven sorry negative seven point five one five times ten to the power negative three equal to lambda two pi epsilon natural log of r f over r i so then what we're going to do at this point we're going to cross multiply this there and then this there so what we're going to have is negative 7.515 times 10 to the power negative 3 multiplied by 2 pi epsilon over lambda which will be equal to natural log of rf over ri so at this point we can rub we can rub everything that's here on top So we're going to have negative seven point negative seven point five one five times ten to the power negative three multiplied by two multiplied by pi multiplied by epsilon which is eight point eight five times ten to the power negative twelve. This will be over lambda our lambda which is uh, which is the which is the charge density which we have as 8 times 10 to the power negative 12 is going to be equal to the natural log of rf over ri <coughs> we can rub this We can punch that in the calculator 7.515 times times 10 to the power negative 3 by 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by 8.85 exponent negative 12 divided by 8 exponent negative 12 this will give us negative 0 0.0 sorry negative 0 0.0522 being equal to natural log of rf over ri so now i want to make i rf subject of the formula so i'm going to take the e which is the exponent the natural exponent of both sides and then the natural log and e will cancel out and then on the other side we're going to evaluate it on the calculator remember this is negative So when we evaluate, just punching that in the calculator, we're going to have 0 0.949. It depends with the figure that you're going to use. I've used the figure that was right in the calculator, but then if you're going to use this one, it's going to give you 0 0.95, which is actually almost the same thing. So then we're going to, this one is equal to RF over RI. So now we know that our RI, which is our initial which is our initial distance is 19 centimeters so then when you cross multiply we're going to have rf being equal to eighteen centimeters which is our answer which was what was which is what exactly we were looking for so thank you very much remember to subscribe to this channel um if you have any questions you can send them to the number that's on this on your screen on whatsapp and then i'll be able to either make a video in response to them or send you a voice note thank you very much